Hi there everybody, it's Willie Strachan here. If you don't know me, I'm one of the chaplains to your boys brigade or your girls brigade company. I hope you enjoyed singing along to that opening song. It's a great song, I really love it. I think it's really catchy and I think that you can't really stop singing along with it yourself. If you fancy, you can rewind it and sing along again. Every year for the past five years, I've spent a week at Boys Brigade Camp at Calicranke. And every morning before breakfast, we sing a song and we say thanks to God for bringing us safely through the night. And we ask God to be with us throughout the day to come. And again, every evening before supper, we sing some songs and we have a blether with God. And we also think and talk about some of the stories that might help us to get a better understanding of what it means to be a Christian and a better human being. And this video clip that you're watching right now will try to do exactly the same thing. There are bound to be people who are watching this video who have different degrees of belief in God. But I hope that we can all just listen for the next half hour or so to see if we can find something that might help us to follow the only two commandments that Jesus Christ ever gave us. And these were to love God and to love one another. But let's sing another song before we get going. I'm going to tell you a short story later about a young man and his dad, so I thought we might hear and sing another song on a similar matter. The song's called Father Abraham. I hope you enjoy it.
let's just sit in the quiet for a moment or two and have a wee blether with God. Let's think about the times that we've messed up a bit and let's just talk to God about these times. So let's have a blether with God. Dear God, we're drawn together at this difficult time for our family, our friends, our youth organisations, our country and indeed for all of humanity. Please help us to be forgiving to one another. Help us to be the first person to hold out a hand of friendship and forgiveness to people that we've fallen out with or argued with. God, we know that sometimes we mess up. Quite suddenly, without us even thinking about it, we do and say hasty things which we'll live to regret. And sometimes, God, we do and say things which are bound to hurt other people and they also degrade ourselves. We also know that there are times when we could have said or done something that would, we, that would have really helped somebody who was toiling, but we didn't do it. For whatever reason, we didn't do it. And we missed the chance to do the right thing. So God, right now in the quiet, just for a few moments, we remember these times and we want to say sorry for them. Jesus said that if we are truly sorry for the wrong things we do, then God forgives, and those who we have wronged will also forgive. So let us truly seek and give forgiveness for the wrong things that have been done. Amen. Let's have a bit more fun with another short song. This time, it's one that we love at the camp. It's called With Christ in the Vessel. I hope you enjoy it. long ago there was a man who had built up a huge business. He'd set it up as a small enterprise and had built it up over the years. And he'd opened up new shops and outlets just whenever the opportunity arose. In addition to that, he also employed local people, so he was really popular within the local economy. He would give local people a job and he created business opportunities also for his two sons. His two sons were his pride and joy, and they never wanted for anything. One day, when he was busy walking in his office, the door opened and his younger son came in. Hi there, he said. Good to see you. What are you doing back from university so early? Well, Dad, his son said, 
I want to enjoy my life while I'm still young. I don't want to be like my brother and finish university and then come back to work here with you. There's a great big world out there and I want to see it. And I know that I'll come into a lot of money when you die, but I don't want to wait until then. So I want you to give you my share to me right now. His father was very upset. But I've given you everything that you've ever needed, he said. Why do you want to do this? His son yelled, I want to live my life my way. I've got my own plans and I want to stand on my own two feet, he said. And although he wouldn't tell his father this, the son really had always dreamt of having fast cars, fast women and lots and lots of parties. Surprisingly, the father gave him what he wanted, even although it broke his heart. Well, now the guy had lots of money and he set out to enjoy himself. He was doing all the things that he said he wanted to. He was having holidays abroad in the sun. He had a brand new car. He wore the latest, smartest gear. He had everything, the best of all that life could give him. And he soon became a really popular guy with all the people that he hung out with. So much was happening now that he didn't even give his family a thought. The first few months living like that were amazing, but soon the money started to run out. And when that happened, he found that his friends also ran out on him. He tried to get a job, but with so many people looking for work, he soon found that it wasn't easy. And with no money, the only place he could find to sleep was in the doorway of a shop with pieces of cardboard for a mattress. And the only food he had was what he could find in the bins that people had thrown out around about the town. One particularly cold night, he was woken up by a not-so-friendly policeman. You can't sleep there. Haven't you got a home to go to? The young man paused for a moment and remembered home. How he wished he could be back there right now. I can't go home. My dad will never forgive me, he told the policeman as he got up and left. Over the next few days, the young guy spent a lot of time thinking. He knew that he'd caused so much hurt by what he'd done, which could never put right. However, he knew that his father was actually a really good man and that he treated all the people who worked for him really, really well. So maybe there was a possibility that if he could say the right words, his father might let him work in one of his shops. The young man wasn't really bothered about what he could do. Anything was better than what he was doing right now. So he decided to go home. He was really scared of what might happen, and so he practiced what he would say to his father over and over and over again. As he approached the family home, his father was looking out the window, just like he'd done every day since his son had left home. He was always hoping. And when he saw the young man coming down the street, at first he didn't believe his eyes, but another look and he recognised the shabby-looking person. He rushed out of the house. My son, he said at the top of his voice. And before the young lad could speak one single word of what he'd rehearsed so often, that he was going to say he found himself in the biggest hug in the world from his father. Dad, Dad, I'm so sorry. He tried to start again, but his father wasn't listening. My son, I thought I'd lost you, but here you are back with us, the rich man said. Welcome home. Come in and get out of these clothes. Have a bath, have a shower, and we'll have a huge party to celebrate you coming home. Well, Muhammad invited his whole family and all his friends to celebrate the return of his son. And in his welcome home speech, he said to everyone that was there, let's give thanks because the son I thought had left forever is back here with us. I thought he was dead and he is alive. I thought we'd lost him forever. Wow, what an amazing story. I wonder what was going through your head as I was reading that story. I'll tell you some of the things that were going through my head. 
Imagine the nerve of the young guy asking his father to give him half of everything that he owned right now, before his father was dead, when his father would still have use for these possessions. How would you expect one of your parents to react if you did exactly that? But could you believe his father's reaction? Despite the brain breathtaking and almost insulting cheek of the son's request, the father agrees to it. Has he gone completely crazy? Amazing. And then, how did you feel when you heard that the son went off and blew the whole blooming lot? A huge amount of money, absolutely squandered. The young guy had lots of friends when he was spending all that dosh, but eventually the spending had to come to an end. Then the hard time came. And surprise, surprise, you know what? His so-called friends just disappeared. A bit like snow off a dike. If he hadn't spent what he had on loose living, he would have had the money that he needed to weather the hard time, but he didn't have that. And so he was reduced to a life of a homeless person, just like some of the people we see begging right here on our streets in our city of Dundee. So what did the young guy then decide to do? Well, eventually, as he sees it, his only option is to be up front, to recognise what a massive mistake he's made, return to his father and say how sorry he is. He would even ask for an ordinary job working in one of his shops. Is that what you would have done? And what about his father's reaction to that? Did you think that he reacted the way that he should have? Did the young lad get what he deserved? Well, I'll tell you what, I think the welcome the young lad gets is far from the humiliating reunion that he would well have expected. The returning son must have been astonished. But he continues by beginning to say that what he'd planned to say to his father, and he manages just to get the first two parts of it out. But before he can really get into it, and particularly a bit about asking for just an ordinary job working back in the shop, the father interrupts and says, let's go in a completely different direction. Welcome home. You're welcome with open arms. And I'm going to organise a huge welcome home party for you. Could you believe it? I wonder why the father did that. How would you have felt if you were the young man? If you were the father, would you have done the same as the father in the story? And one person that we didn't hear much of in the story was the, bro was the young man's brother. What would you have felt like if you were the brother of the young man? Because you were the one who'd not made up such unreasonable demands for the father. You were the one who'd stayed on and continued to work hard. How would you feel about it all? Well, maybe right now when we seem to have a lot of time on our hands with no BB or girls' brigade or clubs to go to, maybe we could spend some time just thinking about a few of these questions. I'll tell you what, you could even post up some of your thoughts or get a member of your family to post up some of your thoughts on a, on a group a group Facebook page. Maybe one of your leaders could organise that. Let's join in the singing of a really good song though now. It's called Make Way, Make Way. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King, King Splendor arise, fling wide the gates and welcome thee into.
God again. But this time what I would like you to do is after you've finished watching this video with the other people in your house or if you're on your own, ask yourself about all the things in your lives that you're truly thankful for. Things like family and friends, things like our possessions, things like people who work in all the services and shops that are keeping us going right now. Things like people giving their time to volunteer in our clubs and organisations. Things like the opportunities that we get to improve our own selves and situations. And then do the same again, but this time ask people and ask yourself to think about other people who are having it tough right now. People who can't see a way forward right now. People who are facing difficult personal relationships. People having problems at school or at work. People who are ill or maybe even dying. And people who are really sad because a close friend or relative has died. And then, on your own or with your family, why don't you spend a moment or two in the quiet somewhere just thinking about all of that? Try it. I think you'll find it worthwhile. Our closing song is a great one. It's a song by Stormzy. It's called Blinded by Your Grace. I'm blinded by your grace, by your grace. I'm blinded by your grace. I'm blinded by your grace. Lord, I've been broken. Although I'm not worthy, you fix me. I'm blinded by your grace. You came and saved me, Lord. I've been broken. Although I'm not worthy, you fixed me. Now I'm blinded by your grace. You came and saved me. One time for the Lord. And one time for the cause And one round of applause One time for Fraser T. Smith from the courts I think we got one I stay prayed up, then I get the job done Yeah, I'm Abigail's youth, but I'm God's son But I'm up now, look at what God's done No, I'm real tall, look at what God did On the main stage, running around topless I phone flips, then I tell him that we got this This is God's plan, they can never stop this Like, wait right there, could you stop my verse? You saved this kid and I'm not your first It's not by blood and it's not by birth But oh my God, what a God I serve Lord, I've been broken Although I'm not worthy He fits me I'm blinded by your grace You came and saved me Lord,
I hope you've enjoyed our service today. I've really enjoyed doing it. Join us again. Remember, stay at home and take care. And God bless all of you. Jesus said, peace be with you. So peace be with all of you. I'll maybe see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care. God bless. Bye.